Hello viewers, welcome to an interesting session on a great novel written by Emily Bronte called Wuthering Heights. Let us try to know some interesting facts about the author. Emily Jane Bronte was a British novelist and a poet. Now best remembered for her only novel Wuthering Heights, a classic of English literature. Emily was second of the three surviving Bronte sisters, being younger than Charlotte Bronte and older than Annie Bronte. Emily was born in Thornton near Bradford in Yorkshire to Patrick Bronte and Maria Branwell. She was the younger sister of Charlotte Bronte and the fifth of six children. The family moved to Haworth where Emily's father was perpetual curate and it was in these surroundings that their literary oddities flourished. In childhood, after the death of their mother, the three sisters and their brother Patrick Branwell Bronte created imaginary lands called Angria, Gondal, Galadine, Oceania which were featured in the stories they wrote. Little of Emily's work from this period survived except for poems spoken by characters. In 1842, Emily commenced work as a governess at Miss Patchett's Ladies Academy at Law Hill School near Halifax, leaving after about six months due to homesickness. This shows that Emily was a sensitive lady. Later, with her sister Charlotte, she attended a private school in Brussels. They later tried to open up a school at their home but had no pupils. It was the discovery of Emily's poetic talent by Charlotte that led her and her sisters Charlotte and Annie to publish a joint collection of their poetry in 1846, poems by Curer, Ellis and Acton Bell. To evade contemporary prejudice against women writers, the Bronte sisters adopted Androgynous first names. All three retained the first letter of their first names. Charlotte became Curer Bell, Annie became Acton Bell and Emily became Ellis Bell. In 1847, she published her only novel, Wuthering Heights, as two volumes of a three volume set, the last volume being Agnes Grey by her sister Annie. Its innovative structure puzzled critics much, although it received mixed reviews when it first came out as the book which later became an English literary classic. In 1850, Charlotte edited and published Wuthering Heights as a standalone novel and under Emily's real name. Like her sisters, Emily's health had been weakened by a harsh local climate at home and at school. She caught a chill during the funeral of her brother in September and having refused all medical help, died on December 19, 1848 of tuberculosis, possibly caught from nursing her brother. This also shows the strong bond that developed between the brother and the sister. She was interned in the church of St. Michael, an All Angels family capsule, Haworth, West Yorkshire, which is in England. Origin and source of this novel is equally interesting. For any literary work, that base is very, very important. Now, let us look at the interesting chapters which gave a wonderful personality to this novel. In the late winter months of 1801, a man named Lockwood rents a manor, house called Thrushcross Grange in the isolated Moor country of England. Here, he meets his dwarf landlord Heathcliff, a wealthy man 
who lives in the ancient manor of Wuthering Heights, four miles away from Grange. In this wild, stormy countryside, Lockwood asks his housekeeper, Nellie Dean, to tell him the story of Heathcliff and the strange denizens of Wuthering Heights. Nellie consents and Lockwood writes down his recollections of her tale in his diary. These written recollections form the main part of Wuthering Heights. Nellie remembers her childhood. As a young girl, she works as a servant at Wuthering Heights for the owner of the manor, Mr. Earnshaw and his family. One day, Mr. Earnshaw goes to Liverpool and returns home with an orphan boy whom he will raise with his own children. At first, the Earnshaw children, a boy named Henley and his younger sister Catherine, detest the dark-skinned Heathcliff. But Catherine quickly comes to love him and the two soon grow inseparable, spending their days playing on the moors. After his wife's death, Mr. Earnshaw grows to prefer Heathcliff to his own son. And when Hindley continues his cruelty to Heathcliff, Mr. Earnshaw sends Hindley away to college, keeping Heathcliff nearby. Three years later, Mr. Earnshaw dies and Hindley inherits Wuthering Heights. He returns with a wife, Frances, and immediately seeks revenge on Heathcliff. Once an orphan, later a pampered and favored son, Heathcliff now finds himself treated as a common laborer forced to work in the fields. Heathcliff continues his close relationship with Catherine, however. One night, they wander to Thrushcross Grange, hoping to tease Edgar and Isabella Linton, the cowardly snobbish children who live there. Catherine is bitten by a dog and is forced to stay at the Grange to recuperate for five weeks, during which time Mrs. Linton works to make her a proper young lady. By the time Catherine returns, she has become infatuated with Edgar and her relationship with Heathcliff grows more complicated. Further, when Frances dies after giving birth to a baby boy named Hareton, Hindley descends into the depths of alcoholism and behaves even more cruelly and abusively towards Heathcliff. Eventually, Catherine's desire for social advancement prompts her to become engaged to Edgar Linton despite her overpowering love for Heathcliff. Heathcliff runs away for three years and returning shortly after Catherine and Edgar's marriage. When Heathcliff returns, he immediately sets about seeking revenge on all who have wronged him. Having come into a vast and mysterious wealth, he deviously lends money to the drunken Hindley, knowing that Hindley will increase his debts and fall into deeper despondency. When Hindley dies, Heathcliff inherits the manor. He also places himself in line to inherit Thrushcross Grange by marrying Isabella Linton, whom he treats very cruelly. Catherine becomes ill, gives birth to a daughter and dies. Heathcliff begs her spirit to remain on earth. She may haunt him, drive him mad just as long as she does not leave him alone. Shortly thereafter, Isabella flees to London and gives birth to Heathcliff's son named Lytton after her family. She keeps the boy with her there. Thirteen years pass during which Nellie Dean serves as Catherine's daughter's nursemaid at Thrushcross Cranch. Young Catherine is beautiful and headstrong like her mother, but her temperament is modified by her father's gentler influence. 
young Catherine grows up at the Grange with no knowledge of Wuthering Heights. One day, however, wandering through the moors, she discovers the manor, meets Hareton and plays together with him. Soon afterwards, Isabella dies and Linton comes to live with Heathcliff. Heathcliff treats his sickly whining son even more cruelly than he treated the boy's mother. Three years later, Catherine meets Heathcliff on the moors and makes a visit to Wuthering Heights to meet Linton. She and Linton begin a secret romance conducted entirely through letters. When Nelly destroys Catherine's collection of letters, the girl begins sneaking out at night to spend time with her frail young lover who asks her to come back and nurse him back to health. However, it quickly becomes apparent that Linton is pursuing Catherine only because Heathcliff is forcing him to. Heathcliff hopes that if Catherine marries Linton, his legal claim upon Thrushcross Grange and his revenge upon Edgar Linton will be complete. One day, as Edgar Linton grows ill and nears death, Heathcliff lures Nellie and Catherine back to Wuthering Heights and holds them prisoner until Catherine marries Linton. Soon after the marriage, Edgar dies and his death is quickly followed by the death of the sickly Linton. Heathcliff now controls both the Wuthering Heights and Thrushcross Grange. He forces Catherine to live at Wuthering Heights and act as a common servant while he rents Thrushcross Grange to Lockwood. Nellie's story ends as she reaches the present. Lockwood appelled ends his tenancy at Thrushcross Grange and returns to London. However, six months later, he pays a visit to Nellie and learns of further developments in the story. Although Catherine originally mocked Hareton's ignorance and illiteracy in an act of retribution. Heathcliff ended Hareton's education after Hindley died. Catherine grows to love Hareton as they live together at Wuthering Heights. Heathcliff becomes more and more obsessed with the memory of the elder Catherine to the extent that he begins speaking to the ghost. Everything he sees reminds him of her. Shortly after a night spent walking on the moors, Heathcliff dies. Hareton and young Catherine inherit Wuthering Heights and Thrushcross Grange and they plan to be married on the next New Year's Day. Look at the complex twists and turns throughout the story. Very interesting. Complex patterns of thought process are successfully displayed in the novel. After hearing the end of the story, Lockwood goes to visit the graves of Catherine and Heathcliff. Wuthering Heights is also popular as socio-economic novel. The novel opens in 1801. Bronte chose in order to fix its happenings at a time when the old rough farming culture based on a naturally patriarchal family life was to be challenged, tamed and routed by social and cultural changes. These changes produced Victorian class consciousness and unnatural ideal of gentility. In 1801, the Industrial Revolution was underway in England. When Emily Bronte was writing in 1847, it was a dominant force in English economy and society. 
and the traditional relationship of social classes was being disrupted by mushroom new fortunes and an upwardly aspiring middle class. This social economic reality provides the context for socio-economic readings of the novel. The reader sympathizes with Heathcliff, the gypsy oppressed by a rigid class system and denigrated as imp or fiant. But as Heathcliff pursues his revenge and tyrannical persecution of the innocent, the danger posed by the uncontrolled individual to the community becomes apparent. It reveals the abuses of industrialism and overbearing individualism. Heathcliff is morally ruthless with his brutal analysis of the significance of Catherine's choosing Edgar and her rejecting the finer humanity he represents. Despite Heathcliff's implacable revenge of Victorian society against those with power, his ruthlessness strips them of any romantic veneer. As a result, he too betrays his humanity. Through the aspirations expressed in the love of Cathy and Hareton, Heathcliff recognizes some of the quality of his love for Catherine and the unimportance of revenge and property. He thereby is enabled to regain his humanity and to achieve union with none other than Catherine. The area that the Brontes lived in, the town of Howarth in West Riding, was particularly affected by these social and economic conditions because of the concentration of large estates and industrial centers in West Riding. Proceeding from this view of mid 19th century society, Eagleton sees both class struggle and class accommodation in Wuthering Heights. This also shows that this novel has very beautifully captured the ongoing societal patterns in while narrating this wonderful story. Heathcliff, the outsider, has no social or biological place in the existing social structure. He offers Catherine a non-social or pre-social relationship and escape from the conventional restrictions and material comforts of the upper classes represented by the genteel Lintons. This relationship outside society is the only authentic form of living in a world of exploitation and inequality. It is Heathcliff's expression of a natural non-social mode of being which gives the relationship its impersonal quality and makes the conflict one of nature versus society. Heathcliff's connection with nature is manifested in his running wild as a child and in Hindley's reducing him to a farm laborer. But Catherine's marriage and Hindley's abuse transform Heathcliff and his meaning in the social system, a transformation which reflects a reality about nature. Nature is not really outside as we understand it because its conflicts are expressed in the society. However, Heathcliff the adult becomes a capitalist and a predator turning the ruling class weapons of property accumulation and acquisitive marriage against them. Society's need to tame or civilize the unbridled capitalism is handled in the civilizing of Hareton. Hareton represents the human class which was being degraded. In adopting the behavior of the exploiting middle classes, Heathcliff works in common with the capitalist land owner 
Edgar Linton to suppress the yeoman class. Having been raised in the yeoman class and having acquired his fortune outside it, he joins spiritual forces against the squarearchy. Thus, he represents both rapacious capitalism and the rejection of the capitalist society. However, because the capitalist class is no longer revolutionary, it cannot provide expression for Heathcliff's rejection of society for a pre-social freedom from society's restraints. From this impossibility comes what Eagleton calls Heathcliff's personal tragedy. His conflictive unity consisting of spiritual rejection and social integration. Heathcliff relentlessly pursues his goal of possessing Catherine, an obsession that is unaffected by social realities. In other words, the novel does not fully succeed in reconciling or finding a way to express all Heathcliff's meanings. The Gothic element is also dominating or in other words, it is the dominating element or the dominating element in Wuthering Heights. In true Gothic fashion, boundaries are trespassed, specifically love crossing the boundary between life and death and Heathcliff's transgressing social class and family ties. Bronte follows Walpole and Radcliffe in portraying the tyrannies of the father and the cruelties of the patriarchal family and in reconstituting the family on non-patriarchal lines even though no counterbalancing matriarch or matriarchal family is presented. Bronte has incorporated the Gothic trappings of imprisonment and escape, flight, the persecuted heroine, the heroine woofed by a dangerous and a good suitor, ghosts, necrophilia, a mysterious foundling and revenge. Look at the eerie atmosphere that has added enough spice to the whole novel. The weather buffeted Wuthering Heights is a traditional castle and Catherine resembles Anne Radcliffe's heroines in her appreciation of nature. Like the conventional Gothic hero villain, Heathcliff is a mysterious figure who destroys the beautiful women he pursues and usurps inheritances and with typical Gothic excesses, he batters his head against a tree. There is the hint of necrophilia in Heathcliff's viewings of Catherine's corpse and his plans to be buried next to her and a hint of incest in their being raised as a brother and sister or as a few critics have suggested in Heathcliff's being Catherine's illegitimate half-brother. Wuthering Heights contains some elements of the Gothic novel listed above. There is a suggestion of the supernatural, the extreme landscape of the moors and the wild storms. Death figures prominently in the story as well as a villain hero driven by passion found in Heathcliff. Catherine is wooed by both a good and a dangerous suitor and revenge is a driving force in the plot. In Wuthering Heights, Catherine can be placed in the genealogy of the Gothic heroines and fact that the novel has been seen as an example of the female Gothic is further evidence that the Gothic has a far-reaching influence on Wuthering Heights. It is also noticeable that Isabella and Cathy Linton resemble Gothic heroines. Emily gradually makes her female characters shift into more lively figures and Gothic heroines are transformed into several versions of more animated women in Wuthering Heights and echo each other, mirror each other and collaborate with one another to provide a whole an new view. In short, as an opposite or an incomprehensible example, each character helps others to identify themselves. 
they explore others to find themselves and see others as distorted mirrors are not what they are. The female figures in Wuthering Heights creates a whole version of women together. In Wuthering Heights, Emily Bronte mainly prefers using the Gothic element violence. Through either physical or psychological violence, her male characters make their hidden feelings known. For instance, Hindley's hostile treatment of Heathcliff and his mortifying expression are signs of his jealousy, whereas Heathcliff's aggression points to his desire or revenge. Astonishingly, in Wuthering Heights, Bronte's female characters are the ones who are exposed to cruelty. In other words, her female characters are usually passive. For example, even though Isabella confesses that Heathcliff has been about to kill her, she just cries out her feelings and her hatred. Similarly, though Heathcliff beats her and prevents her from going home, young Cathy has to stay at Wuthering Heights. She also just shouts at him and expresses her emotions via her utterances. Dear viewers, I am sure you must have observed how negative emotions have played with the characters and how they have been displayed beautifully on the canvas of Uthering Heights by Emily Bronte. The negative emotions and the Gothic elements are interwoven beautifully and they have given a separate dimension to its characters and the world of literature is definitely indebted to Emily Bronte for her great contribution to the world of literature.